Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Yamal Mahalanyam Engineering College, Covid Budni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture in the subject Operations Research. This is lecture number 2.6. In the earlier five lectures, we solved problems of transportation model of different types. And in this lecture, we are going to solve problem uh, with the transportation model with restriction and unbalanced type of transportation problem. So here the topic is transportation model optimum solution for the model with restriction and unbalanced type of problem. The learning outcome to the students at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to uh, solve problem in the transportation model. We recall the procedure for finding the optimum solution in the transportation model. Uh, first we have to find the basic feasible solution using the Virgil's approximation method. Then we have to check the number of allocations. The number of allocations should be m plus n minus 1, where m is the number of source point, n is the number of destinations and, uh, and the allocation should be independent. Uh, independent means they should not form closed loop among themselves. Then we have to check for the optimality. There is a procedure to check for the optimality. If the condition for optimality is satisfied, then the current basic solution is optimum. Then if the condition is not satisfied, then we have to iterate towards the optimum solution using the UV method. Then we again we find the basic feasible solution and we repeat the procedure. Once again we go for the checking the optimal test and continue the procedure uh, till we get the optimum solution to the transportation model. And this is lecture number, example number 8, uh, find the optimum solution for the following transportation model. So here we have three source point of capacity S1 equal to 90, S2 equal to 60 and S3 equal to 90 and the destination we have five destinations of demand D1 equal to 30, D2 equal to 40, D3 equal to 70, D4 equal to 40 and D5 equal to 60. And here the cell 3, 5 is marked with the red color. That means you cannot transport item from the source 3 to the destination 5. So, in the above example, the commodities cannot be transported from the source 3 to the destination 5 and this kind of problem is known as the transportation problem with the restriction. And here, the first we have to check for the balance of the problem. So, here the, it is a balanced type of problem. The total supply and the total demand are equal to 240. So, the problem is balanced type of problem. Then we have to find the basic feasible solution using the Virgil's approximation method. In the Virgil's approximation method, we have to find the difference between the lowest uh, cell value and the next low cell value in every row and every column. So, we take the first row, the lowest cell value is 7, the next low cell value is 9, the difference is 2. We take the second row, the lowest value is 2 and the next lowest value is 6, the difference is 4. We take the third row, the lowest value is 8, the next lowest value is 11, the difference is 3. We take the first column, the lowest value is 6, the next lowest value is 11, the difference is 5. Then we take the second column, the lowest value is 8, the next lowest value is 12, the difference is 4. We take the third column, the lowest value is 7, the next lowest value is 8, the difference is 1. Then we take the fourth column, the lowest value is 2, the next lowest value is 13, the difference is 11. And here 9 minus 9 equal to 0. Now, among the differences, the highest difference is 11. So, now we have to take this column. So, where in the fourth column, demand is 40. Among the three cells, the lowest cell value is 2, where the supply capacity is 60. So, we can satisfy all the demand here. We fix x24 equal to 40 and out of 60, remaining is 20. The next highest value is 5. So, now we have to take the first column. In the first column, the lowest cell value is 6 where the demand is 30. So now the supply cap corresponding supply capacity is 20. So we satisfy, we fix the x21 equal to 20 and the, here the source point is completely exhausted. Here the remaining balance is 10. The next lowest value is 4. So we take this column. Uh, this is entering now. So D2 equal to 40. Uh, the demand is 40 here. Among the cell value, the lowest cell value is C32 equal to 8. We fix x3 to equal to 40. So, all the 40s are fixed here. So, the source point has capacity of 90. Out of 90, remaining is 50. The next value is 3. So, next value is 4, but it is exhausted. So, next value is 3. So, here the availability is 50. 
Now the lowest cell value here, it is already satisfied. This part is already satisfied. We have 11. So here the demand is 10. So it is fixed here. And here is demand is 40 is alerted here. So the, the supply is completely exhausted. The next value is 2. Now the 90 is the capacity. 90 is the source capacity. And here 30 is required. So 90, 30 is required. And the 60 is alerted. We fix x13 equal to 30. And x15 equal to 60. So the 90 is completely exhausted. Now all the supplies are exhausted. So this 50 is also exhausted. All the demands are satisfied. So the allocation is complete. Now we calculate the transportation cost. So the overall transportation cost equal to C13X13 plus C15X15 plus C21X21 plus C24X24 plus C31X31 plus C32X32 plus C33X33. Substitute numerical values 7 into 30 plus 9 into 60 plus 16 into 20 plus 20 into 40 plus 11 into 10 plus 18 into 40 plus 11 into 40 equal to 1000 rupees 1820. Now we have to check for the optimality. So uh, the number of cells allotted are equal to m plus n minus 1. So 3 plus 5 minus 1 equal to 7. So they are independent. There are 7 allocations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 allocations and they are independent we can go for the optimality test. First of all, the optimality set test, we write the cost matrix of the allotted cell. So these are all the cost value of the allotted cell and we designate the row as U1, U2, U3 and the column as V1, V2, V3. Now we take V1 equal to 0. When V1 equal to 0, for this 6, U2 equal to 6. For this 11, U3 equal to 11. When U2 equal to 6, this 2, for this 2, V4 equal to minus 4. When u3 is 11, for this 8, v2 equal to minus 3 and v3 equal to 0. When v3 equal to 0, u1 becomes 7. So u1 becomes 7 and here this becomes 2. Now these are all the uh, u1, u2, u3, v1, v2, v3, v4 and v5 values. Now we calculate the uv value of the unalerted set. Now when u1 equal to 7, uh, we fix v1 equal to 0. For v1 equal to 0, so v u1 equal to 7 plus 0 equal to 7, 7 minus 3 equal to 4, 7 minus 4 equal to 3, uh, 6 minus 3 equal to 3, 6 minus 6 plus 0 equal to 6, 6 plus 2 equal to 8, 11 minus 4 equal to 7. So these are all the white color cells are the unalerted cells. So here the uv value we calculated. The next we have to subtract the uh, uv value from the original cost matrix of the unalerted cell. So the white color cells are unaltered cell and we subtract the value from the original cost matrix. So 13 minus 7, 12 minus 4, 13 minus 3, 6 minus 6, 14 minus 3, 13 minus 7, 9 minus 8. So the values are 6, 8, 11, 10, 0, 6 and 1. Now the cell, this is called a cell evaluation matrix. The last value, last cell is, last matrix is called a cell evaluation matrix. And it does not contain uh, negative value, does not contain negative value. So the solution is optimum. So the previous solution is optimum and the transportation cost is rupees 1,001820. We take uh, next example, example number 9. A company has factories at A, B, C which is supply warehouses B, E, F and G. Monthly factory capacities are 160, 150 and 190 units respectively. Monthly warehouse requirements are 80, 90, 110 and 160 units respectively. The unit cost of transportation is given in the table. Find the allocation so that the total transportation cost is minimized. So we have three factories A, B, C and uh, uh, four warehouses B, E, F, G and the uh, unit cost of transportation is also given here. Now the demand is 440 unit. And the total capacity is 500 units. So this is called as unbalanced type of product. The demand and the uh, supply capacity are not equal. Now the demand and supply are not equal. The demand is less. So introduce a dummy column with a demand of 60. So we introduce a dummy column. Now the demand and supply they are equal to 500. So the D1 equal to 80, D2 equal to 90, D3 equal to 100, D4 equal to 160, D5 equal to 60. S1 equal to 160, S2 equal to 150, S3 equal to 190. So these are all the uh, UB, I mean supply demand capacities are equal. This is the balance type of problem. Now we can proceed for the, the solution of the 
transportation problem. So if the problem is unbalanced, when the demand and the supply capacity are not equal, either you have to introduce the dummy column. So here we introduce the dummy column. Suppose the uh, supply capacities are uh, less, we have to introduce the dummy row. Either introduce the dummy row or dummy column to satisfy, to make the problem into a balanced type of problem. Then to find the basic feasible solution, we have to find the difference between the cell values. So here the first row, the lowest cell value is 0. The next lowest value is 37, the difference is 37. The second row, the lowest value is 0. The next lowest value is 40, the difference is 40. The third row, the lowest value is 0. The next lowest value is 38, the difference is 38. And vertically, the lowest value is 39, next lowest value is 40, the difference is 1. So here 38, 48, 10. And here 38, 42. And here 37, 43, 6. And here it is 0. Now, we have to take the highest, the highest value, the 40 is the highest value, that row is to be satisfied. So, the supply capacity is 150, among the, uh, among the cell values, the lowest value is 0, we allot 60 here, so the remaining is 90, in the 90, next lowest value is 40, here we allot 80, so this is completely satisfied, then here we allot 10, so here out of 90, it is 80 available. So now the 90, actually this 80 plus uh, uh, 90 plus 50, 150 completely exhausted. The next, uh, low, next value is 38, next highest value is 38. Now the supply capacity is 190 and the here the lowest value, it is already satisfied. So this demand is satisfied. The next lowest value is 38 where the demand is 80, demand is 80. So we satisfy, sorry, uh, yes, the demand is fixed here. Then the balance is 110, so 110 is allotted here, so 80 plus 110 equal to 190 and this is uh, demand is satisfied, this demand is also satisfied. The next value is 37 where the supply capacity is 60 and here the demand is 160, so it is completely exhausted and this demand is satisfied. Now all the supply capacities are exhausted, all the demands are satisfied and this is the allocation and here the optimum overall transportation cost. C14 X14 plus C21 X21 plus C22 X22 plus C25 X25 plus C32 X32 plus C33 X33. Uh, substitute numerical value is 37 plus 160 plus 40 plus 40 into 80 plus 49 into 10 plus 0 into 60 plus 38 into 80 plus 40 into 110 equal to rupees 17,050. Now we have to check for the optimality. Number of allocations should be equal to m plus n minus 1, which is 3 plus 5 equal to minus 1 equal to 7, but the allocations are only 6. So the green color uh, cells are the original allocated cell, and the one more allocation is made with the lambda, the least cost, lowest cost, with the lowest cost is 38, we allot it here. And uh, it is not only lowest cost, if you look at it here, it is not only lowest cost, but you should not form the closed loop. So if you make allocations elsewhere, it will form the closed loop, so it should not form the closed loop. And uh, x13 is lambda, lambda is very, very small value. So adding will not uh, disturb the supply or demand capacity, demand of the uh, problem. Now the check for optimality using the UV method, we write the cell values of the allotted cell and uh, we fix B1 equal to 0 and find the U1, U2, U3 value. So when B1 equal to 0, U2 become 40. When U2 become 40, for this 40, 49, U2 become 9. For this 40 and uh, for here it is 0, B5 equal to minus 40. Uh, when B2 equal to 9, so here it is 38, so U3 become 29. When U3 become 29, for this 40, this become 11. When B3 equal to 11, for this 38, so this U1 becomes 27. When u1 equal to 27, for this 37, v4 equal to 10. So all the values, uv values are calculated. Now we have to find out the uv value of unalerted cell. So the white color cells are unalerted cells. We have to find the uv value of the unalerted cell. So 27 plus 0 equal to 27, 27 plus 9 equal to 36, 27 plus uh, uh, minus 40 equal to minus 13. 30, you 40 uh, plus 11 equal to 51, 40 plus 10 equal to 50, 29 plus 0 equal to 29, 29 plus 10 equal to 39, 
29 minus 40 equal to minus 11. So the white color value, white color cell values are the UV values of the unalerted cells. Then we go to the next table where we subtract the UV value from the original cost matrix of the unalerted cell. So 42 minus 27, 48 minus 36, 0 plus 13, uh, 52 minus 51, 51 minus 50, 39 minus 29, 43 minus 39, and 0 plus 11. So the cell evaluation matrix. So this is called a cell evaluation matrix. Here there is no negative value. So the cell evaluation matrix does not have any negative value. So the original solution, the previous solution is optimal. The cell evaluation matrix does not possess negative cell values. So the present solution is optimal. So the optimum solution is 17,050. The transportation part is 17,050. So we stop here. So these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject. Uh, you may find operation research in the book operation research. Uh, and I upload the video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. If you subscribe the channel, use the videos for your better learning. So thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. Uh, you can contact me for any clarification on the subject. We will meet again with another uh, video lecture on the transportation problem. Until then, bye.